Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to lecture 15, which is on community engagement in STEAM. So today's lecture is, the lecture's aims are to discuss how families and wider community can be involved in STEAM education. And then we're going to be thinking of ways to enhance STEAM learning, thinking about and making connections with cultural, with the culture and uh, events. And then we'll finally end with the introduction of a mini assessment. Okay. So getting families and wider community in, in STEAM education is super important for making learning fun and inclusive. Now think about things like family STEAM days where parents and kids can come together and work on cool projects or hosting community workshops that get everyone excited about science and technology. Uh, bringing, in, bringing in guest speakers and teaming up with local businesses and museums can also give uh, a, a real taste of what STEAM careers could be for students. Partnerships could involve organizing field trips, providing resources and expertise. And, and, and why not create an online space also where families can share their ideas and stay connected. And these platforms can be used to share resources, showcase student uh, projects and organize events and activities. It's all about making STEAM education a community that's exciting for everyone involved. Now, ways, ways to enhance uh, STEAM learning, okay, uh, from the lens of Asian cultural events. We have um, origami ECA, and as an example, so you can see from the pictures I've added, this is from my current school at BSB International School. So Miss um, Pearl, who's a, 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 a NAP Foundation State teacher at the school, she currently leads this origami ECA extracurricular activities who I support. And in these, in these ECAs, um, it offers a hands-on way to explore geometric, geometry and spatial reasoning. And this also helps students to learn traditional Japanese origami designs and create three-dimensional shapes. Now, this, uh, the, the current ECA that we currently uh, deliver, it's for um, three to four-year-olds. We, we have offered for older kids as well. And the main focus was the basic uh, or, uh, skills of origami. Now, origami, if some of you may not know, it's a, the Japanese art of paper folding, okay? And it introduces concepts of symmetry, patterns, and geometry. Another way of enhancing um, STEAM learning is through Chinese calligraphy. Now, you can explore the art of Chinese calligraphy, which combines um, expressive, art, sorry, artistic expression with precise brushing. And so you can you could invite a calligraphy expert to demonstrate traditional Chinese brush painting techniques and teach students how to write basic Chinese characters. Now, this not only enhances fine motor skills, but also introduces students to the aesthetics of Chinese culture. Now, for instance, in my school, the SB International School, um, during Project Week, uh, which is a residential trip for students from grade two to uh, 
12, but I'm just focusing on primary grade two to five. Um, the children had opportunity to attend a calligraphy workshop where they explored using different natural materials from their environment to write. And it was really nice to see children trying out different ways of brushing their writing materials on their paper. They were very proud of themselves with what they've created and produced. Another way of enhancing is through Indian Rangoli designs. Now, Rangoli is a traditional Indian art form where intricate des designs are created on the ground using colored powder, powders, rice flour or flower petals. So in your setting, especially if you have um, students from an Indian background, you could organize a Rangoli design activity where students could work together to create a vibrant and symmetrical patterns inspired by Indian, Indian culture. culture. You could also invite some um, the parents of those students to come in and support and act as experts in that um, area. Now, this um, activity promotes creativity, collaboration, and spatial awareness. Now, finally, the Japanese tea ceremony. This is another um, activity that you could use, again, especially if you have Japanese in your uh, cohort. Now, at DSB, we, we did have some of our students' parents come in and lead and facilitate a Japanese tea ceremony to our staff, actually. And it was simply beautiful to watch and witness it. It promoted and encouraged the staff to ask questions to better understand the culture and the reason why they do things in certain ways, in, in certain order. So it was very, very interesting. And it kind of helped us as a community to better understand our students, our families and their culture and how to best cater for their culture in our school. So I would encourage you explore, um, I would encourage you to explore um, doing this in your, in your setting, which emphasizes on mindfulness, respect and attention to detail. You can host, you could also host a virtual tea ceremony demonstration or a hands-on workshop where students can learn about the history, etiquette, and cultural, this cultural significance of the Japanese tea ceremony. This activity promotes cultural understanding and appreciation while fostering a sense of mindfulness and reflection. So again, thinking about STEAM learning and the, your cohort, your context, your culture. Um, so by incorporating these cultural events and activities into your STEAM learning, you can provide your students with a holistic and multicultural education that fosters creativity, critical thinking, and global awareness. Now, these activities not only enhance students' understanding of STEAM concepts, but also promotes cultural appreciation and empathy. Okay, now, this is your mini assessment. So for this lecture, um, we would like you to design a community-based team project. And these are the steps for success. It needs to be a small scale project, okay? So to ensure you can achieve it and it's measurable, you need to identify your community needs. And again, we need to make that real life connection, real life scenario. So it's, it's relevant. You need to set clear objectives, okay? 
make connections and collaborate with your local organization or businesses to support you in this project, okay? Because again, this is a community-based STEAM project. Design the STEAM activities for the community to access and then promote community engagement in accessing your STEAM activities. And finally, get some feedback from the community members about your project, okay? Now for you, what you will need to submit to members, to the members of International Association for Quality Education, so then I'll be able to check and see, is your plan overview of your project, photos and or feedback of the community members that carried out so that participated on your STEAM activities and um, and also you could also share um, some testimonials of um, the people that were involved in your project that supported you, okay? So that's what you'll have to submit for this mini assessment. I hope you enjoy it and have fun. This is not a competition. This is not um, a race. It's about uh, putting all the learning that you've learned so far right from the start of the modules and lectures to now and put it all on the table. And Again, to make it relevant for you and your context is thinking about your community, what your community needs, what would they benefit, what kind of activities, STEAM activities could you come up with, or could yeah, could you come up with that would uh, engage uh, members of your community? Okay, right. So, uh, so to, to summarize what we've covered in this lecture, so we've discussed ways to involve families and why and the wider community in STEAM education, and then we thought of ways to enhance STEAM learning. Um, and finally, we ended up with uh, the introduction of the mini assessment. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing the, your submissions. Enjoy. Bye. See it.